are the motors strong enough to move one full glass and one empty glass and already the empty glass has about two kilograms I mean it's it's a German mass crook it's not not just a, a slight little thing so let's try that works so open the valve it starts flowing close the valve it stops flowing that works so ready to test the new firmware it all worked on the simulator uh, because I always build a simulator of a machine in most cases I build a simulator of the machine for software development so I used this opportunity to show you my simulator it's an IKEA Tupperware with a scale on top with an ESP32 uh, on inside and with a push button so I have no motors, I have no sensor, I just have the button and the scale but at least I could program all these features like calibrating the scale optimizing that thing and having the user interactions user pushes the button in different situations which triggers functions and stuff like that No, why not? It tells me it cannot connect to that network. Oh, I just found a bug. I just found a bug. The bug is that I save my preferences and then I load my preferences. And having and the preferences are stored uh, on a on a partition that is persistent. So during the whole development I did on this thing I had it running, I had all the preferences saved and then I changed the software to load it from where it's saved because an earlier version of the software had saved it but the current version has no fallback if there is nothing saved and nothing is saved and so what happens? Ah, you have issues but maybe Maybe I can reuse my factory, my use my factory reset feature to load it from somewhere else and then restart it. It works! It works! My fact, I have a factory reset feature that means if you push the power button long enough, it will reset the password to some default. Just a fallback because usually. I've met enough people who are able to forget their passwords. I mean, it happens to me sometimes too. So you need a way to reset passwords and that's the reset password feature I have. And as it seems, it even works, even if, if I have other bugs in the software, according to what my, um, what my serial console is telling me down here. So, that means we can retry to connect. We are connected. Ta -da -da, to the browser, reload the browser. 10.0.0.1 was not found. But you are on 10.0.0.1. Let's try a ping. I have a ping, so that's not too bad, but somehow the web server is broken. Oh, of course, of course, I didn't upload my spiff image, upload the file system. So when you work on ESP32, you have two things to do. You have two things, you have, a, you have the code which runs and you have that spiff partition, that data partition where you put all the the web stuff on it or you can put other files on it but you have two separate uploads and I forgot the second upload so maybe that is also related to that and it works! I am online 
And of course I have some issues here. So, 159 conveyor distance, I want to save that. And I want to move the conveyor and button turned blue, so that's a good sign. When I press this button, I should be first referencing and then moving back and forth. I'm not sure, I, I, I have to check my code, but let's check what happens if I push that button. Nothing. Oh, obviously. What is missing? My power supply is off. No wonder it nothing works. So I have only 5 volts, but I don't have the, the 24 volts needed to move something. And since I have electronic switches, they will give me a, a 1 if they get no power. So, move conveyor mode, button, try. What was that noise? Don't even want to know. Oh! Why? Oh, it sent me a cup. Why does it send a cup? Okay, but let's, let's test the cup thing, right? Because I think that one is working. Yeah. Yeah! Okay. I, I redesigned this once again. I hope this is now a final design that might work. Looks good. You see the issue, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get them gently down here. I'm not trying to build a cannon. But at least I can separate one from the stack, okay, or two. start thinking more and more if, if it's even possible to do it with these solenoid magnets or if these things are too primitive for that. One works, two works, and three at once. Nah, that's not what I want. To have less power, a simple hack I can do is reducing the on time of the juice. Because since I have a microcontroller, I have one, milli one microsecond as resolution. So, and the shorter I have that pulse, the less the magnet moves down. So let me try that. Oh, oh. That makes a difference, right? You see what happens now? Just makes dip, 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 nearly nothing. Okay. Yeah, so that was the minimum value I had. Well, you know what I could go the other direction. We had 50k, let's go to 30k. Ah, reconnect the Wi-Fi first. The thing is, of course, every time I upload stuff, it means it restarts the ESP32, which means the Wi-Fi connection drops. 
which means I need to first reconnect the Wi-Fi before I can do, because I set the mode and before I can set the mode and do this. Too much, still too much. This, this, maybe someone of you watching knows a Windows 10 hack to automatically try to reconnect to a Wi-Fi if it's there. Now that's, that's, that's where I want to go. Look how gentle it has become, you know? It just gives it a little push. Look. Okay. I still have to somehow catch that, catch that cup down here so it doesn't um, fall around. That's definitely another thing, but that's mechanical. I can, I can somehow guide it. That's, but at least I have the minimum needed force to go down here. Nah. Which of course is not always enough. Let me check, am I even symmetrical or not? Ah, yeah, that's the thing. The whole... Back to the drawing board. Let me carefully think about how to do that. It seems that this approach was, is not really promising. And the second issue I have, I, I talked with my brother recently and he reminded me on one thing especially here in Switzerland, which is my primary market, these cups are sometimes already banned and sometimes close to getting banned because they want to have reusable cups at festivals and at some street parties and stuff. So they have reusable cups with, uh, with a deposit on it so you have to bring back your cup to get back the few bucks you have paid deposit to just handle the trash problem. The thing is these reusable cups don't have that edge up here. And if they don't have that edge, the whole system here will not work. So, meh. So maybe I have to go the more expensive route and have another step or motor built in and another mechanism that is based on friction or whatever that allows me to have a more precise movement than just shooting out stuff with my solenoids. But yeah, I, I have to think about this. Um, and also figure out what are the other bugs in, in my system. Oh, I, I have to test the valve. I could test the valve before doing something else. I think now is the moment for the little GoPro to show you my valve. So basically the idea of the valve, maybe you have seen it in the earlier video. I'm not sure if I put it in. The idea is just to pinch the hose. Because that's the advantage, you have no seals, no nothing. You can just pitch, pinch the holes, the hose. And now I can show you. I added two white marks on my black, because black on black is, is bad contrast, so you don't see what is going on. Yeah, and there's another test I could also do, actually. I'm a I'm very, very curious one how airtight the system is. I mean, if, I, if it's airtight, it will be watertight, it will be beer tight too. Four bar is the limit I have set myself because I think it's about the maximum of the pressure you have on a beer keg. Because if you have your beer keg, you put CO2 pressure into the keg to push out the beer, which also has the advantage that it keeps CO2 on top of the beer so the CO2 doesn't get out of the beer. So you don't lose the, 
the bubbles in the beer. And it's a whole philosophy what is the right pressure to put on top of your beer. But the maximum value I've seen is about four bar. And sometimes it's more like one, two, depending on what kind of beer you have. But if I'm safe for four bar, I'm pretty sure I'm safe for all the cases out there. I have gathered in my reserve a piece of pneumatic tube with a diameter adapter that is slightly too thick to go in here, which is perfect. That gives me a tight fit. I also have this. I mean, that's an invention. I saw that recently in my uh, shop for hardware supplies. I mean, that's really, really smart. Someone put a little piece of plastic at the end so you can tighten it by hand. I mean, because the good thing if you tighten it by hand is you don't over tighten it because these clamps, they don't like over tightening. And now look over here, what I have over here. Down here is the air compressor and here is a whole piping I have. And this is my pressure regulator. So I'd like to go up to 0 0.4 megapascal, which should be four bar if I'm not completely wrong. Now, let's give it a try. Air flows. No wonder the valve is open. Close my valve. Everything moved because it built up pressure. I'm pretty, pretty confident that there is no air going through. Just to be sure, a beer glass full of water, my hose going down into the water. At least that part works, right? I'm not sure what happens if I open it up. Yeah, I mean, I can be ready over there to close if I... Oh, I... Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a good idea to be ready on the ball valve over there to close it. Because, yeah. So that what, that's what happens if air comes out. It works with the big glass. Because if I put a light plastic cup down here, you see, because I, I mean, I, I like the idea of having that half circle to, to put the stuff around, but that means of course that my hose is bent. And since my hose is bent, uh, it, it will have a tendency to go down in an arc and not straight. All the systems go straight up, but if you go straight up, you need more height, which I wanted to avoid. But I mean, since I'm redesigning the whole thing, I'm also thinking maybe I'll redesign this too. I have my next concept now. I know how it's going to look like. Bad news is I have, I, I produce a lot of trash because all this is more or less gone, except the motors and the electronics. So this will be belt driven. This huge part goes away. These parts will be supported from below. Um, that's certainly one change for the conveyor. Uh, but the bigger change will be up here because I mean, fixing this is difficult. That's one thing. But the other thing is if you want to transport it, you see how deep this is. So it's, it's really annoying to transport. So I was thinking, actually, I already printed the part for this, this one. So first thing in here, I have a handle directly printed into it to make it easier to carry. But what's more important is this part here. That's a hinge. So it was supposed to go in there so that you could rotate this like that for transport and align it like that for operation. But it's, it's still too big for my taste. I will go with something vertical and add a piece of stainless steel tube down here, which has the big advantage that it comes down really straight. And what I also want to do, not have the valve down here, 
with all that hose length to the exit because all that length I'm still scared it's, it's going to generate a lot of foam. I have my vertical tube here and I put the valve actually directly before that. But then I have even more weight to move up and down. But that's not a big issue because I've calculated with the torque of that little motor, in theory I can move, I have 50 Newton, like 5 kilograms more or less. If I'm not completely wrong. I should recheck my calculation, but, but somewhere like that. And since I have the spring that compensates for the weight, if I set it up perfectly, I have only friction. But of course the spring uh, has, has a linear constant, so I'll, I'll figure that out. But so that is the concept for that. And since then I don't have this arc back here, I don't need the space back here then I can make the whole thing much narrower. And then I make kind of a gate where, where the glasses pass through. So I, 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 it will be like that, closed here. And for the cup magazine, but the idea would be to, to have two wheels, be able to move up and down. So basically I can move the column down and then I have a little ratchet that clicks into this. And then I move the rest of the column up and then this one should, should fall down. Time to spend another few hours doing cat design.